the longing of my heart, the desire of my life, precious to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, precious to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, you are the longing of my heart, the desire of my life. You are precious to my soul. Jesus, my all in all, you are precious to my soul. Jesus, my all in all. Ololu feo komi, makori, makeoga. Ololu feo komi, makori, makbe. Ololu feo komi. Help me sing. Oh Lord, we Oh Lord, we My calling, my bell. Oh Lord, we My calling. Book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, No other name given under heaven amongst men whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. No other name given under heaven amongst men, nor is there salvation in any other. But there is no any other name given under heaven among men whereby we might be saved. No other name. Not your father's name. Some people came here tonight and maybe your family has a name. You have trusted in that name. You believe whenever the name of your family is mentioned, doors you open. But I want to submit to you that there is no other name given under heaven amongst men. The name might open some doors, but that name cannot open all doors. Maybe you have an uncle, you have an auntie, you have a big brother somewhere, a godfather somewhere. One day that name will fail. But the Bible speaking in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says there is no other name. No other name given under heaven amongst men. The name of Jesus opens all doors. Somebody tonight, may he appear to you as Savior tonight. May that name open doors for you today. As we enter into the next year, 2023, may the name of Jesus go ahead of you. Somebody needs to take the name of your family and hide under the name of Jesus. Take the name of your father, hide under the name of Jesus. Take the name of your mother, hide under the name of Jesus. The name of that uncle in your family, the name of that big brother somewhere. Take that name and hide under the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, he says no other name. Give it to heaven. Every other name was given to man, but the name of Jesus was given by God himself. And there is no other name under heaven given by man that can do what the name of Jesus can do. I pray tonight that the name of Jesus will give you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So who gave the name? We say God himself gave the name. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 12. Can we open to the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 12. He said and God has highly exalted Jesus. God has highly exalted Jesus. And God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow. I submit to you tonight that the name of a brother, the name of a sister, the name of an uncle may be able to open, like I said, some doors. But the Bible tells us that the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. That is why he came. That is why he was anointed. That is why he is called Savior. Because he came to save from situation and circumstances. And I believe God, no matter how ugly the situation is today, Yahweh is bringing you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I get a louder amen? Who gives a name is very important. In this side of the world or in this part of the world, when a baby is, is born, people begin to send their names. Many times we dedicate children on the altar here. 
the father of the baby will proudly stand and give the name of the child they said papa what should be the name of your child the father will say call my child diamond call my child john call my child so so the name of a child the person who gives the name is very important and sometimes if it's a long-awaited baby the grandmother from the village will send her name the mother will send the name uncles and aunties will send the name very very important who names a child but this particular naming ceremony we are talking about mortals had no hand in it mortals had no hand in it there was no father there no mother there the opinion of joseph was not sought because it was not necessary it was not important the opinion of his relations and the relations of mary was not sought the only people who sat down was to name this baby was divinity the father the son himself the host of heaven sat down and god the almighty the monarch of zion named him performed the naming ceremony and gave the name angel gabriel only came to deliver the name to mary and to joseph tonight i want to let you know because that name is wasn't given by man that name was not concocted on earth that is why that devil respects the name of jesus that is why that situation in your life will respect the name of jesus that is why when you carry that name doors will open for you and tonight i don't know what you are struggling with here tonight you well i want to welcome you to this wonderful worship session wonderful worship time where we came together to worship the one we call savior himself the one we call jesus and as we celebrate the lord god almighty as we celebrate jesus our savior he will manifest himself in your life in the mighty name of jesus can i get a louder amen you see the truth of the matter is I don't really blame you if you can't shout an amen a lot of people call the name but they have not encountered him as savior they have not encountered him as savior if you encounter him as savior you cannot but worship him you cannot but sing about him oh my god you cannot but celebrate him my prayer tonight as i came here is oh god when i saw the young people here tonight my heart became heavy and I say, Jesus, may we not waste this generation. May they have an encounter. May they get a revelation of who you are. Sometimes we have many people singing on this side who have never encountered him as Savior. We have many people play the instruments who have never encountered him as Savior. We have many people preach who have never encountered him as Savior. We have many brothers and sisters come to church for years who have never encountered him as savior sweetheart listen to me you can't encounter him as savior and remain the same the bible says he shall call him jesus or he shall say he shall say he shall say if he has not saved you from anything then you have not encountered him. the man drunk beaten and bedeviled by the spirit of drunkenness encounters the savior collects the bottles from his hands washes him clean and sets him up on the rock to manifest in his generation so that he can deliver others if you are here and you are still bedeviled by drunkenness and lies and cheating and fornication adultery some even came here tonight with their girlfriends sit down together to celebrate the savior you have no right to celebrate if he has not saved you from something let jesus manifest in your life as savior tonight and your life will never remain the same again if you ask the man abraham abraham will tell you i, re I remember when he came to my father's house and brought me out of idolatry so i call him yahweh you ask moses moses would tell you i remember how he encountered me even when i was a baby floating on the nile river nile was about to drown my destiny when he encountered me pulled me out of the water took me to the house of pharaoh brought me out of the house of pharaoh took me to the wilderness brought me out of the wilderness took me back to egypt brought me out of egypt and let me with six million people i who thought i was a fugitive a runaway a murderer yahweh brought me out moses can tell you his testimony 
if you encounter Isaac, Isaac would tell you his testimony, how he battled with barrenness, and Yahweh encountered him, delivered him from barrenness, made him the father of children. If you meet Jacob, Jacob would tell you how he encountered him, a fugitive, runaway, cheat, unstable in character and attitude. When he encountered the Savior, he didn't leave him the same. Battled with him throughout the night. When the breaking of the morning came, it was not the same Jacob who went in the night that woke up in the day. Somebody, this Christmas will be a different one for you. If your amen is louder, take it by fire. You ask them, the story goes on. You meet a man like Joshua. Joshua would tell you I was a nobody until I encountered Yahweh. I encountered him as Jehovah Sabbath and I went to war. I came out victorious. If you, if you ask a man like David, David would tell you I was a nobody languishing in the forest, languishing, pastoring animals and singing to animals. But when Yahweh appeared, when he appeared to me, he saved me from that position. He saved me from the lion, saved me from the bear, saved me from Goliath. He saved me and put a crown on my head. May that anointing locate somebody here tonight. Somebody languishing in obscurity. May Savior, may that Savior, the Savior Jesus, encounter you, bring you out of darkness, and bring you into his marvelous light. Oh my God. And I can go on and on. Mary would tell you I was a nobody. I was a nobody. Nobody, no name. Nobody knew me. 17 years old or thereabout. A teenager espoused to be married to a man. And one day while I was sitting down in that house, sweeping or washing place, suddenly divinity entered the place. And they say, hey, Mary, you are highly favored. You have been located by Yahweh. The Savior just came. In fact, he wants you to carry him. And Mary said, oh, be it unto me, according to your word. One young man today will lift up his hand and say, Jesus, be Jesus to me. No longer me, but thee. Let divinity take over my humanity. Let me carry him as Savior. Let my generation come to worship. They are not coming to you. They are coming to worship the Savior that you carry. And Mary was there, remotely disconnected in Egypt running away because she thought that she could they, they, they wanted to kill her and she ran to Egypt and the Savior went to the east and the Savior brought kings from the east and the Savior brought gold and the Savior brought frankincense and the Savior brought Maya and kings located her where she was remotely disconnected and everywhere this gospel is preached today the name of that woman is called because she carried the Savior because she harbored the Savior he brought her out of darkness out of obscurity out of shame and brought her to a place where she's highly honored and highly favored today do you know the savior have you encountered the savior you can sing about him yet not know him you can preach about him yet not have him you can talk about him yet not encounter him oh my god Oh, I remember I remember the where you brought me from I thank you <laughs> Lord, I thank you. I father, I father. My father was a farmer. My mother is also a farmer. They are illiterates. We go to school. From Benue State, Adoka Village. We lived in abject poverty. I'm the first, the children of six. My life. I was used to 
authority. Remember, sometimes we will be eating soup, you will be biting cockroaches inside. My mother will used to peel orange in mommy market with razor to sell. One day, the age of 30, I went for a fellowship and I heard them talking about the Savior. Who can deliver? Who can change? Who can transform? Who can rewrite a person's story? The preacher didn't call my name. But the person he was describing looked like me. Even though I was 13, I wanted that life he was talking about. I don't know how many people heard him that day when he made the altar call. But at 13, I heard my name. I felt destiny was calling me. And I got up and said, this life this preacher is talking about. I need this life. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. Lord, if you can use anything, use it. I came out that day and I gave my life to Jesus. That was the beginning of my life of adventure. It didn't look as if something big happened. But in heaven something big happened. From that moment forward my life began to take a turn. I began to hunger for God. My heart began to pant after God. The more I ran after him, the more I wanted to know him. And I continued like that until I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And Yahweh brought me out. Took me to the school I went. Took me to the university. Yours truly was sponsored by grace. Grace paid my school fees. When I entered the university, I didn't know how my father, who didn't have anything, would pay. One day they said they were giving scholarship from Benway State and I was one of them. The second year they said they were giving scholarship to the best student in the university. I was one of them. The University of Just precisely. And I was given three, two scholarships at the same time running concurrently. Where others go to pay school fees, I go to collect school fees. From the bursary. Grace sponsored me. Grace saw me through. Grace kept lifting me. When I stand today and I look at my siblings, grace made this. I can comfortably talk about the Savior. When he enters your life, he comes to save you from something. If he has not saved you from something, then he is not yet the Savior. You have not encountered him yet. This year, don't go into 2023 talking Jesus, singing Jesus, yet not in having encountered Jesus. If you encounter Jesus, he will bring you out of something. The Bible says, for you shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sin. We didn't come here tonight just to sing about Jesus. Today I want to appreciate God. I graduated from the university at the age of 22. I began to have my master's degree at the age of 24. I began to lecture at the age of 24, 22, 24. Between 23, 24, I began to lecture in the university. They used to call me then the youngest lecturer in the University of Jaws. Grace made something out of me. The Savior entered my life. He brought me out to bring me in. And today, to the glory of God, I can stand and talk about the Savior who brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have no right to preach about him. No right to sing about him. No right to talk about him if you have not encountered him as Savior. Sweethearts, let not play church. Be shouting, I receive for years and you are where you are. Tonight, receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I told God, Father, before I talk about the characters in the Bible, let my life be that canvas. Use my life as that billboard. When I want to talk about what grace can do, let them look at me. When I want to talk about what the Savior can do, let them look at me. This is what he can produce. When a tailor sews a beautiful dress, the tailor will hang it outside so that people passing will look and say, if you can sew this one, I want you to sew for me. I don't know how many people today are tired of the kind of life 
they are living before you sing tonight before you enter worship tonight let us align ourselves let him encounter you first as savior then you can begin to worship the way you ought to worship can we rise up on our feet and begin to talk to him tonight just open your mouth and begin to say father i want you to encounter me here tonight i don't just want to sing about jesus talk about jesus rap about jesus i want to encounter him as savior open your mouth and talk to god please this morning i didn't come for everybody but i know that the spirit of god must have touched your heart here tonight it's not a preaching service it's a worship service but we just have to charge ourselves with the word so that your worship will not be wasted tonight your worship will not be a waste tonight jesus can still save you jesus can still deliver jesus is still in the business of saving men and he wants to do something for you today My father we give you praise thank you jesus thank you jesus hold it in jesus name lord i give you my i give you my soul i Tonight, I want to make an altar call wherever you are. Reduce the music, whether you are up or down. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus one more time before I enter into 2023. I want a different, a new brand, a new brand of Christianity, a new brand of relationship, a new brand of intimacy. Please hold the music. Can you come and meet me here, please? I want to surrender totally to Jesus. Come and meet me here. We'll pray for you before we enter into the worship session. Come, come and meet me here. Don't wait for anybody. Maybe you are the one this meeting was organized for. God bless you. Just come. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Don't wait for anybody. Come. Just come. If you are in the congregation, you can keep praying. I want to rededicate. I want to surrender. 2023 must not meet me like this. If you don't know him as Savior, you can't worship him the way you ought to worship him. If you don't, you can't worship him the way you ought to worship him. You, our worship tonight will just be, let's just have fun. Mm -mm. He wants to save you. He wants to bring you out of something. I'm still waiting. There are more people that need to join them. Whether you are up, just come down. This is why you are here. So that your worship will be accepted. So that you will enter 2023 a new person, a new creation, a brand new man. I'm waiting for you. Grace is calling you. Don't enter 2023 still playing Christianity, still praying church. I want your worship to be accepted tonight. That is why the word came before the worship. The word came before the worship. Thank you, Jesus. If you are in front here, just talk to God. I want you to talk to God. Say, Jesus, I want to give my life to you today. Somebody say, Jesus, I'm rededicating my life to you today. It's going to be a wonderful year for you. The Savior is going to enter the new year with you. The Savior is going to walk with you. The Savior is going to make something beautiful out of you. Some of us are struggling where we are struggling because we are yet to encounter him as Savior. Somebody needs to say, Jesus, today I surrender. That is why this meeting was organized. So that souls can be reconnected back to the Savior. He came to save his people from their sins. That was why the Son was manifested. That he might deliver. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you. Please just stand up. Just stand up. Everybody in the congregation, just stretch forth your hands to these people for me. Stretch forth your hands. What a wonderful God we serve. I want you to talk to God, every one of us in front here. Jesus, I want you to save me. For those of us. Say, Jesus, I'm dedicating, rededicating my life to you. Because you came forward and to give your life to him, you will encounter him as savior. The Bible says he's able to save to the uttermost those who trust.
those who believe in him thank you Abba Father in Jesus mighty name we pray now I'm going to pray for you Father in the name that is above every name I thank you for these ones that are giving their lives to you today or rededicating their lives to you Jesus I want you to say Jesus say thank you for today say today Lord Jesus I am accepted and receiving as my Lord and my personal Savior say save me Lord save me Lord deliver me Lord rescue me Lord in the name of Jesus say my father say forgive my sins say cleanse me from all unrighteousness say oh God write my name in the book of life say from today I give you my heart I give you my soul say take over my life Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus oh father I give you the glory and give you the honor say Lord Jesus say Lord Jesus I confess that you are the Son of God I confess that you died for me I confess that you rose again and I confess that you are coming back again for me Lord Jesus say thank you my father in mighty name we pray my father I want to thank you for every one of these ones those of them giving their life to Jesus those of them rededicating their lives to Jesus father I pray that Lord even at first shall it be for them in the mighty name of Jesus let it be let it be a new life a new grace father God from today forward in the mighty name of Jesus you are able to save them to the uttermost who give their lives to you save them Holy Spirit write their names in the book of life enter into father god fellowship with them from today forward their lives will never remain the same thank you abba father i hand them over to you spirit of the living god do with them only what you can do in the name of jesus thank you lord god almighty